So I have been hunting and hunting just about every single day for this particular figure, just because it's new, just because it's an exclusive, and it's got a wild paint scheme in its translucent, and I'm on a Predator kick lately, so we're taking a look today at the Target exclusive NECA The Predator, Fugitive Predator, but this is the one with the thermal vision paint job. So it's a translucent blue figure with the thermal paint scheme on it, which I just think looks pretty sweet. Uh, you're only going to find this in Target stores specifically. It's not going to be found on Target's website. It's going to be in that NECA section at your Target. So you're only going to find him there. And he's proven pretty difficult for me to track down, but I finally lucked out. So we're going to open this guy up and take, and take a look. But we've got him here in a nice big window box. It's not ultimate style packaging, so it's just a window. You've got the thermal shot down there on the bottom. And then on the back, we have got just some product shots and then a bit of a bio and then another thermal shot for this guy back there. So let's do it. Let's crack him out and take a look. All right, guys, here he is out of the packaging, our Fugitive Predator, which is a Predator from the movie The Predator, as if things aren't already confusing enough with how they named that movie. So we've got a very distinct looking figure here, and this guy is obviously a redeco of a figure that already exists. So there is a Fugitive Predator from this movie that NECA released not too long ago. I don't have him. He's in, he's in the mail. I just don't have him yet. I got him after the fact. And this guy is the same base figure, but without all the bells and whistles. So this guy has a different color scheme. He is a specific point in time for the character. And then he doesn't have extra heads. That figure has extra arms, all sorts of crazy stuff. So we're going to be looking at that soon. But we've got this guy in front of us. And obviously, we've got him here in his beautifully painted and very, very translucent glory. So that's a huge draw for me to begin with. Translucent blue plastic. I'm a huge fan right out the gate, but I think this figure is pretty amazing all things considered I, I should not have waited on the regular one But we'll take a look at that one when he gets here But let's get started on this guy and see how he moves around because he's got some interesting joints as far as what NECA did uh, With this guy, so let's see how he moves around So we'll start at the head as usual and we have got a ball peg So there's a ball that goes in you can go up and down side to side a little bit for, for, for bobble action and then rotation You do have a laser cannon on the side so it's hinged so we go forward and backwards and then it hinges at the top and then it rotates at the top as well it's kind of loose but it's one of those situations where while you're moving it it's kind of loose or at least mine is but when you get it where it needs to go it kind of sticks in place pretty well so you know take that with a grain of salt you've got shoulders that go out about that far i really can't get them to go out much further than that you've got arms that rotate the shoulder pads will of course get in the way they're rubbery so they'll move a little bit there is no bicep swivel in the traditional sense. It's actually a, I don't know how to say this the best way, lower bicep, upper elbow swivel. So you've got one right here, which is a cut, because this figure, the regular one has swappable arms uh, to, dig, to get rid of the, the armor here. So I guess they had to do this to change that up. It still has double jointed elbows. I find mine to be pretty difficult to move, but you can get him to move them pretty well. Definitely more than 90. So you've still got rotation, you've got double hinge, you've got rotation at the gauntlet, rotation and hinge at the wrists here as well. And I'm popping his, his accessories off. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off now. We'll talk about those. You've got a upper diaphragm swivel. Move them around. Bob side to side, backwards and forwards. And then of course there's a ball peg that goes down all around. You can get this guy to bend pretty well. That's pretty wild, all things considered. That's, that's pretty good. I don't know if you're gonna have him pose like that, but you've got the options. And then of course you've got twist. Legs go out about that far kick forward, kick backwards. There are rubbery pieces in the way, but they don't really get in the way too much. you got a thigh cut up there. We've got double jointed knees. And then we have got the traditional ball pegs down at the feet. So you can kind of hinge them side to side, or rock them side to side, hinge them back and forth, and then of course rotate down there. So he is, you know, for all intents and purposes, he is, as far as articulation is concerned, he is an ultimate style predator because he doesn't have a single buck in the chest and he has double jointed elbows. They are kind of weird. Mine were kind of stiff, but they definitely do work. You might just have to, you know, maybe heat him up or work him a little more than you expect to, but you can definitely get this guy into some pretty fantastic poses. He is very mobile. Now, as far as the sculpt, as far as the paint goes, I think this is another example of NECA absolutely knocking it out of the park. This figure is pretty flawless as far as I'm concerned. The one area that I've seen people maybe kind of gripe about, and it's not a loud voice by any means, is that there's nothing on the back. 
Uh, and, you know, maybe I could get that if this figure wasn't translucent. If he was a solid figure, I would definitely had take issue with that, but he's translucent and he is meant to be a specific thing. So this guy does not need paint on the back. If anything, it would stop light from shining through. So the more that's on the back, the less you're going to get in terms of that translucent nature. So I'm perfectly fine with that. I think it's a good call on NECA's part. I'm sure they already knew that. They knew that long before I got my hands on this figure. So I'm pretty happy with that decision. I do think that the paint applications for the thermal mapping on him is pretty solid. They are done in kind of an interesting way, but I'm pretty sure this is meant to mimic the artwork that we've seen on posters, and I believe it's on the current Blu-ray release as well, which is why some of the hot spots look maybe kind of odd because they're on the armor instead of on the flesh in some ways. Uh, I don't I don't take issue with that in terms of NECA's decision. I just think that's the artwork because I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it looks like. Otherwise, though, I think the sculpt is is amazing. The, some of it can be kind of lost just because of the fact that there's not tons of paint to actually bring out the actual design of the of the figure. You know, it's meant to be a thermal image, so we've got a lot of you know swatches of blue and green and yellow and orange on there. You can kind of make out some battle damage on his armor there. There's tons of sculpted detail all over. Of course, this is the same figure that got released previously, so all of that same detail exists. If I did have one gripe, it's that these thigh pads on him, they uh, they definitely, at least for, for me, they slide down a lot. But once you, you know, pose him, put him back, they're fine. Just something to mention. Otherwise, you know, that's that's probably that's probably as far as I'm going to nitpick on this figure. Uh, I do really, really like this design, and that's coming from someone who has not seen the movie. Uh, after having this figure, I, I plan to at this point, sooner rather than later. I just still haven't. But you've got all the same kind of hallmark NECA things. You've got the, the net lines, which of course aren't painted here, but they're sculpted beautifully. And just in general, the design, I think, translates really, really nicely to figure form, because this guy is pretty unique looking, especially in the helmet. There's just something a little different about it. I do think some of that is a little lost. If you aren't familiar with what he looks like, then you might not really know if this is your only example. But I do think the mask is really, really fantastic. And the regular figure has a swappable head. So you'll get an unmasked version. You'll get unarmored gauntlets. Well, forearms in, 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 that, in that way. So there's a lot of options with the regular figure. This guy is just meant to be kind of uh, the battle-ready version of this Predator that is being watched, I assume, by the big monster Predator, the, uh, the Assassin or the Ultimate or whatever he's called in the movie. But as far as sculpt and paint goes, I think this guy's fantastic. And he's translucent, so... You know it's a winner right off the bat. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is pretty bare bones. Uh, I don't think that's an issue specifically. I understand where NECA's is coming from on this. They're giving us a specific moment in time with this particular character, so he looks a certain way. As far as what we get, we just get the four wrist blades for him. So we've got, you know, four. They've got some thermal mapping each on one side. So you, you know, put them in accordingly. And they just kind of peg into the wrists. If there's one issue that I really think is maybe a problem is that some of these are just really difficult to put in. The uh, the slots are really, really, really tight as far as putting these in. And I've, I've pushed way too hard on some of these already just out of concern that I'm going to break them. So, you know, keep your eye out for that. But that's about it. You know, they just slot in there and then you do two on each arm and you're ready to go. So he doesn't have a lot, but it's not a big deal either. Uh, that's not the point of this figure, but they do give you something to beef him up and to arm this guy. So at the end of the day, this is definitely a winner for me. I think it's obvious lately that I'm very much into Predator figures, and that's because NECA has just been crushing it lately. There's no way to, no way to say it otherwise. They are on their game when it comes to these Predators lately. They are fantastic. And this is another great example. This is a good idea in terms of kind of a point-in-time version of this character. Give him what he needs. Give him this very specific, very iconic-looking paint scheme. Nice translucent plastic. He's got a great sculpt. Just all the NECA quality is there. He's got all the articulation you could need. It's a little different from the norm, but it also works very, very well just because of what they had to do for those arms. And in general, I think it's a cool looking figure. It makes me want to see this movie and see this guy actually in action now, so I probably need to get on that. And of course, now I'm even more interested to see what the regular figure looks like because it has to be just as good. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Target Exclusive Thermal Vision Fugitive Predator. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time...